I'm only human. And when I read something so disgusting that I want to quit, well, then I'm going to quit. All right. I'm not going to quit the entirety of this event, but today I just can't read any more fan fiction. I read a fan fiction. It was what you guys wanted. You know, Chara X Frisk. But here's the problem. In the middle of it, it turned into a mix of Guru and Skak. Skat. Skat. Now, I deleted my brother history, which I usually don't do. I will rid the memory of this fanfiction of my brain, and tomorrow we return to normality. Alright? Thank you. So for now, we are playing Deus Vult. Deus Vult is a choose-your-own-adventure game from 4chan, created by Tokhargol. I think we already played a Choose Your Own Adventure from him, actually. This is version 1.1, 1 .1, page 103. This video is going to be a little bit longer then. Alright. Mm. You know what the worst thing was? It started all fluffy. <laughs> let's, let's forget about it. Let's forget about it. <clears throat> oh, okay. Let me, let me grab a piece of paper. BRB. I'm back. Let me quickly tie up my desk. All right. So, I am Diana, Archangel of Diligence. You have been chosen by our Holy Father in Heaven. Blessed be his name. I hereby grant you the title of Sanctum Galarium. You shall become a champion of righteousness and divine justice. You will hunt down the enemies of God and plunge your holy sword into the wicked and release your holy water into them. This will purify their souls and either bring them salvation or judgment. Whichever you see fit. From this day to the last of your days, any action involving or remotely involving your penis <laughs> is sanctified by heaven and authorized by God <laughs> and shall not be considered evil or sinful in any way. <laughs> Rape, cheating, harem, sex outside marriage, sex inside marriage, and otherwise immoral acts are not considered sins. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> to further improve your sexual prowess, you will produce more seed. Enough to inflate your foes should you wish it, and you will be able to orgasm up to three times before being affected by a refractory period after sex. Oh, my girlfriend is going to love this. Even during your refrigeratory period, your, will your holy sword remain hard and true? Your body will also be immune to STDs and you will be able to toggle if your seed will have a potential to impregnate people. You will soon encounter a sacred Varya nun. She is an agent for a nameless organization known only as the Order. You shall join this holy order and wage war on the wicked. Deus Vult! You have 15 points. 15 and 5 coin. Alright. To spend and must have 0 or more holy points and gold coins at the end of this. Mm, uh, well, I went through the images first. And here's a little disclaimer. So just so you know. When there is an image that, when there is no image, when there is just a white box, that image was so graphic, I had just I, I, I had to censor it entirely. And otherwise there are just white boxes on, you know, naked breasts. So yes, this thing is rather graphic. <laughs> Love it. All right. Class. As a sanctum gadarium, you have the power to bring God's judgment to those you bless with your holy water. Not all enemies of God will willingly let you insert your holy sword into them. You will need to forcibly subdue the forces of evil in order to save them with your holy sword. Choose one class which you will instantly become a master of. 
Your holy power will also make any violence you use non-lethal unless you want it to be lethal. Oh boy. Oh boy, this uh This is actually really detailed. Alright. The saint. Alright. A saint is someone who has mastered unarmed combat. And we're going to skip this one. The paladin. To become a paladin is a great honor. They're holy warrior priests who are masters of the sword and capable of wielding the power of God to heal the righteous and shoot beams of holy light to smite the wicked. In battle, a paladin can summon holy armaments forged by angels to aid the paladin in his fight against evil. So basically, I can summon weapons out of nowhere. Sounds kinda badass. Let's leave the rest. Inquisitor. Oh, this guy looks edgy. Inquisitors are masters of stealth, subterfuge, parkour, and close combat. Inquisitor is similar to the saint in, in, many, in many ways. The key difference is that the Inquisitor relies on speed and agility rather than brute force. They're capable of jumping short distances at a speed, which will make it look like teleportation. Inquisitor sounds really good, actually. Judas Priest! Now that sounds badass! They are priests who have chosen to fight fire with fire and turn the power of magic against the wicked and wield it as a weapon for good. These priests are called Judas Priests. They are despised by the church and generally stunned by the faithful since the use of magic is a sin. But they are, necess they are a necessi ne necessity and play an important part in the war on evil. The gun priest. Now that sounds like awesome. <laughs> a gun priest is a noble warrior who has mastered the deadly art of gun fu. Capable of fighting at any distance and armed with holy guns and silver bullets. They are a force to be reckoned with. Gun priests are able to block enemy bullets with their own bullets and use gun prayers to bless their bullets. A gun priest truly shines when he is outnumbered by numerous foes. He will become stronger proportionately to how many foes he fights. He will sweep across the battlefield like an unstoppable whirlwind of bullets and guns. Now that sounds badass. The martyr. To turn other cheek in the face of evil, that is the way of the martyr. While martyrs possess zero combat ability, they are blessed with beauty and have a holy radiance, which will make them irresistible to the enemies of God. The forces of darkness will descend upon the martyr and rape them. Only when it's too late will the sinners realize who they're fucking with. Literally. I take the Judas Priest. Call me an edgy fuck. But dark powers, I, I want that. I, I, I want, you know, you know, I have I ever told you about my dream ever since kindergarten? You know, I want to stand, I want to become a demon lord. That sounds badass. Yes, but... Come on, I was like eight, and, and, and with eight I always saw demons as like these ultimate badasses without rules, you know, and having dark powers is like the first step, so I take the Judas Priest, please. Uh, which one was it that we have? We have five coins. Okay, so we have now 14. All right. Judgment. You must choose the power which your holy sword will contain. <laughs> And the judgment its seat will bring. Each time you release your power into a sinner, you will be able to choose one or multiple judgments, which will affect them. The first judgment you choose is free. Yeah, and right now I have the screen black probably because there is an image that I've missed. All right, now the screen should have, you know, be screen full again. All right. Holy seat. Can, do I can, wait? The first judgment is free. All right. Holy seed. Your seed is so holy that only a drop of it is enough to impregnate a sinner. The target they will raise will slowly turn them into good virtue mothers. I'm not. I'm not a child person. Sorry. Purification. You can purify the soul of the sinner and turn them into a virtuous, good-fearing Christian and restore their virginity and inner. Yes. Yes. Purification in progress! Why wouldn't you take purification? Seriously. Charm. 
You will strike the sinner with the power of love and make them fall in deep love with you. You will be able to influence them and guide them to a life of righteousness. Well, purification and charm. So we are at 13. All right. What else do we have? Salvation. You can turn the sinners into humans, be they demons, vampires, or any other unholy creature of darkness. Your seed will be their salvation. Nah. Fucked straight. By fucking the sinners senseless, you can make them see the error of the ways and make them repent. Well, I already have purification. That, that's like the same thing, right? Reincarnation. You can make a sinner reincarnate into a cute but powerless lowly con version of themselves. This will teach the sinners humility. While I do like... Hmm... Hmm. Hmm. I'm seriously considering this one. Let's let's read the rest. Bad luck. You can bestow a comically bad luck on a sinner to punish them. The bad luck will also prevent them from doing anything evil. That's yes. I want this one. I want this one. Twelve. Straight to hell. You can send a sinner straight to hell with their where they belong. In hell, they will suffer for their sexual torture of your choice for the duration of one month. Then they will be teleported to you and you will decide if they deserve a second chance or if they will be sent back to hell and experience the sexual torture of your choice for eternity. Mm. That image was graphic, by the way. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'm gonna close something here. One sec. Alright. Servitude, you can turn a sinner into your personal slave. They'll be unable to disobey any order you give them. A life of servitude and good humility will surely do them good. However, you can't you can't order them to fight or do anything violent. Yes. 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 We are at eleven of these holy points. Second chance. The sinner will lose all of their memories and get a second chance to live a vicious and virtuous life. Honesty. The sinner will be unable to lie and deceive others. When asked questions, they will be compelled to answer the question as thoroughly as they can. Sex object. The sinner will be turned into a sex doll, <laughs> on a hole, or a sex toy of your choice. They will be able to feel, see, and hear, but not move or speak. Choose a number. Your chosen number is how many items, how many times they must be used before they turn back to normal. Mm. Come on, I I already have like, come on, I already have like, come on, I have purification, charm, and. The, 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 uh, what was the other thing? Bad luck and servitude. Come on, those those are like already really OP as fuck. That sex object thing would be a little too OP, to be honest. Intervention. Whenever the sinner are about to commit a sin, an angel will intervene and punish them with a divine spanking. <laughs> that sounds funny. Burden of sin. You can increase the sinner's breasts size to any size you want. Preferably, it will be a size large enough to inconvenience them and remind them of their sins. You can also make them lactate, depending on how much milk you make them produce. They will need to spend time milking themselves or suffer breast ache and further breast growth. Don't judge me, I take this one. That sounds pretty OP. Conditioning. The sinner will be unable to orgasm unless they do a good deed. And then they will be rewarded with an amazing orgasm that will make their legs tremble and make them moan with pleasure. This one sounds rather weak, to be honest. I mean, I get it. This way you can condition them into... Again, it's called conditioning. But, hmm. Nah. Nah. We already have charm. I, I, I think charm and... Come on. A mixture of servitude and charm and purification... This combination sounds, sounds, you know, OP as fuck. Divine blessing. As a sanctum galadium, your power can do more than just bring judgments. You can gain access to divine blessings, which can share with, you can share with your companions. So this is basically like artifacts. Diligence. You will no longer need to eat or drink, but you can do as so if you wish. Upgrade. You will no longer need to sleep, but you can do so if you wish. And you possess a super uh, humidorous 
Yeah, I take diligence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that sounds like something that I want. Because then I can save my money on food and stuff or games. <laughs> Virgo Divina. Normally you will be able to flee the presence of the enemies of God when they are with one meter of you, but with this blessing you will be able to sense them when they are within 50 meters of you. Whew. That actually sounds quite of useful. Like just just the usefulness, you know? Hmm. It will be increased to one mile. Again, this... This sounds really useful. Just the usefulness of it. But I won't upgrade it. Like, alright, we are at seven. J just because this one is pretty useful. Divine protection. While wearing a crucifix, magical spells used against you have a 50% to fail. Or, you are immune to all magic while wearing a crucifix. I would lose three entire fucking points. Hmm. Let's read the rest. We only have seven points left. Divine beauty. Choose a new human appearance. Yes. Alright. Oh. You can change gender. Oh, oh. I'm not going to change my gender. Alright. Missionary, you can... Wait, what is the upgrade? No matter people's taste or sexual preference, everyone will consider you beautiful and sexually attractive. If you are a murderer, this blessing will make your beauty divine and transcend logic. Alright, down to five. Missionary, you cannot share this blessing with any companion. You will have the power to temporarily open portals between this universe and another universe of your choice. To bring God's justice to your chosen universe in the multiverse, every fictional universe imaginable exists in the multiverse. Whoa, 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 wait. I... What? No, no, no. I don't understand this one. You cannot share this... Yeah, I, I get that. You will have the power to temporarily open portals between this universe and another universe of your choice to bring God's justice to your chosen universe and the multiverse. So this means that in so this means that um, basically uh, that okay I get it I I, I get it. <clears throat> this one's actually rather interesting. I take this one on maybe. Immortality. Choose an age. Your body will not age past your chosen age. Sure. Four. I know immortality sucks, but hey, fuck it. Am I right? Angelic Armands. You can summon angel forged Armands. If you're a paladin, you will instead be able to summon archangel forged Armands. You can share this blessing with companions. Or... You can now summon Archangel Forge Armands. If you are a paladin, you can summon multiple Archangel Forge weapons in midair and shoot them at your enemies like projectiles. <laughs> Alright, that would be kind of badass to be a paladin right now. <laughs> like, imagine just holding your hand out and then you shoot blades. <laughs> hmm, Angelic Armands sounds pretty badass. Just noticed there's a coin thingy. Alright. Hmm, Angelic Armands. Nah, maybe not. Half Angel! This blessing cannot be shared, of course. You will become a Half Angel, but you will only be able to manifest your angelic wings for up to one hour per week. Uh, upgrade. You are now able to manifest your wings whenever you want. Hmm. I, I, I would basically be like a Crow Angel thing because of the Judas Priest thing. Put this one on the melee, maybe one. Holiest of swords. Your holy sword is blessed to inflict the greatest of pleasure when used to penetrate someone. This will make a high geo possible. <laughs> Upgrade. Being plowed by your holy sword will leave people trembling and full of awe. It is possible that after taking your holy sword, nothing else will be able to satisfy them. <laughs> Let's put this one on the maybe pile as well. Holy harem. Heaven have blessed you with a harem. All companion cost one less golden coin. And all companions will have, have will fall in love with you. 
and you gain the ability to judge anyone to join your harem, then they will count as your companion. Ooh. This sounds like something I would be interested in. You know, I prefer summoning enemies, but all right. Choose an one enemy of God, which you have purchased the ability to affect with judgment, blah, blah, blah. Wait. Uh, hmm. So basically, I can choose one enemy that I can take out, like, really easily. All right. Sealed demon. This blessing cannot be shared, of course. A demon will be sealed inside your body. You're able to channel the demon's power and take it on a demonic form, which will make you four times as powerful, but will oh, but from will only last 15 minutes and you are only able to do it once per month. The demon will be able to speak to you if you allow it to. It will have a personality based on one of the seven deadly sins. You choose which sin. The demon will start out hating you, but if you treat it well and talk to it regularly, it will warm up to you. And what is the upgrade? Uh, upgrade cost two, huh? Right, let me adjust the window, maybe. Just let me adjust the window, all right. You are capable of physically manifest your sealed demon as a permanent summon. The demon will count as your companion. This will take the last four points off of me. Mmm, there's so much on the maybe folder. All right, all right. Tell you what, let me let me quickly check. Let me let me check. Uh, I think I think there was a point. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Those are. Where is it? All right. All right. Here, gain. All right. All right. So I can get into the minus. All right, all right, all right. Let's let's uh, return the slab or suffer your my curse. Wait. Uh, so where did I start with the maybe? Uh, the divine protection was on maybe, but we're not gonna take this one. Um, did we upgrade the beauty? I think we upgraded the beauty. So I. <laughs> all right. So I am going to. Take the holiest of swords, upgrade it. So we are down at two. And I'm going to take the holy harem, upgrade it. This means we are at minus one. Favorite enemy sounds nice, but that could turn out really bad. So we are with the demon. We are at minus five. Oh boy, that's page one. Page two, please. All right. Enemies of God. Even if the power of God is limitless, your power is not. You must choose which enemy of God. Your holy sword has the power to bring judgment upon and which it will be powerless against. The enemies of God can be categorized in different tires. The higher the tire, the harder they are to defeat. However, there are some rare exceptions to this rule. Ooh, this is... This is a long wall of text and a lot of shit that I had to censor here. <clears throat> mortals. Some mortals have transgressed the limits of mortality to the point that they are in need of judgment. Common mortal sinners are serial killers, warlords, dictators, sluts, f f Fujoshi, and feminists. Oh my god! Feminist! Truly the worst of them! Mortals include humans, elves, orcs, goblins, and any other humanoid race of sentient beings. Other mortal races are extremely rare in this world and are considered sinners by default. If you are defeated by a mortal, they will turn you into a sex slave and have their way with you as often as they like. There's a high likelihood that they will record when they are having sex with you and spread the video over the internet. You can expect rescue after three weeks, one month, if 
were captured in another universe. So, the cost to make this one easy to defeat would be one. Alright. But how does this work with some enemies are power I'm powerless against some enemies. How does that work? The possessed. If a immortal if a mortal have lived in a f life full of sin, they can become possessed by evil spirits or lesser demons. These unfortunate souls are called the possessed. They possess minor sub non supernatural abilities and will be capable of putting up a fight. You'll be able uh, to exercise them with their sea with uh, fuck. Let me quickly drink something. Maybe it goes away. All right. All right. Okay. These unfortunate souls are called the possessed. They possess minor supernatural abilities and will be capable of putting up a fight. You will be able to exercise them with your seed. But to do so, you must first break their will by repeatedly pounding the evil out of them with your holy sword. They would scream, struggle, moan, shout, call out Satan's name, and do all kinds of things during sex, but you must remain diligent and keep pounding them until the evil leaves their body. Alright. If a possessed defeats you, they will use their powers to temporarily paralyze you and keep you around as a source of entertainment. They will milk your holy sword dry with their hands, or an owner hole, since they're afraid to put your holy sword inside them. They will marvel and revel at the obscene amounts of holy water your holy sword can spew forth. The order will rescue after a week. Why is it worse to be defeated by a mortal than a possessed? <laughs> um. Wait, 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 wait. I, I have, I, I remember that I have, wait, don't I have, here, 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 um, not burden of sin, but which one was it, which one was it, uh, uh, here, 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 uh, here, well, where was it, don't I have purification, a a and charm, would, would that, the charm would work for the mortals, so I, I don't have to be, is exceptionally stronger against the mortal. So 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 that so we have to think a little bit more tactical here. The possessed since I have fucked them. Don't I turn them into my slaves when I fuck them? Uh so so basically the possessed are also fucked because I'm kind of OP. All right. Witches. Witches are also known as the horse of Satan. Anyone who uses magic is a witch and must face judgment. Satan's horse wields <laughs> the powers of magic and the power of level, <laughs> power level, of which varies depending on the witch. Witches commonly belong to a coven of witches, and if you defeat one, it will be like kicking a hornet's nest. If you are unfortunate enough to be defeated by a witch, they will conduct magical sex experiments on you to try and harness your powers of for evil. They will transform your body into wicked rituals involving lesser demons and other creatures of darkness. Why do this? <clears throat> Why they do this? They will temporarily seal away your powers to bring judgments. You can expect rescue after two weeks. When you are rescued, you will be cleansed of any foul enchantments the witch has put on to you. Yeah, I, I, I wanna, I, I wanna be protected against that. So we are at minus six right now. All right. That doesn't sound good, this minus six. Tire two, the undead, banshees, zombie girls. <laughs> I love how they clarified zombie girls. Ghosts, lichs, are the unholy creatures known as the undead. Depending on what type of undead they are, they, are, they will vary in difficulty to fight. Lichs are the most powerful and zombie girls are the weakest. What happens to you after defeated against the undead will depend on the undead who defeated you. Illich will conduct loot magical research on you to increase their magical power. A banshee would tie you up in bondage and use you as a sex slave. And a ghost will possess your body and go on a ra raping spree. Zombie girls are sold them alone and often come in hordes. They will take turns raping you. You can expect rescue from the undead after one week. Alright, because of the ghosts... Just because of the ghosts, 
I take this one because I don't want to go on a raping spree. Servants of Slanish. Yes, that pick was fucked. The servants of Slanish are numerous and are challenging foe indeed. You will often be able to recognize them because of their mutations. Some have mouths instead of nipples. <coughs> Some have vaginas in their hands. <coughs> Some have purple skin. You must aim to penetrate these unnatural officers with your holy sword, since all our other holes will be immune to the judgment of your holy sword. If you are defeated by the servants of Slanish, they will perform obscene sexual rituals with you and turn you into a sex-crazed abomination. Then they would release you and in your cursed state you wouldn't be able to control yourself. You would be mad with lust and would go on a raping spree to quench your unquenchable thirst for sex. After two weeks you would turn to normal, but any companions you have repeatedly violated during your transformation will need two more weeks to recover. Mm. Honestly... I don't even want to fight this! Like, I want to be as far away of this as possible! So are vampires. Fuck vampires. That f fuck vampires. Like, fuck them. I don't even want to read this. I am going to increase my chance to kill vampires because fuck vampires. Fuck vampires. I'm at minus eight. Jesus Christ. Fuck vampires. Tire three. Abyssal. Abyssal or Abyssal Girls are a type of monster girl with originated from the Abyss, an unholy eldritch realm of pure darkness that should not exist. Much like vampires, Abyssals have a hole which is immune to your power and you should never engage them when fighting them. It is their vagina. It is full of small tentacles capable of providing a pleasure so extreme it would make you ejaculate every second your holy sword remains inside the Abyssal Hole. <laughs> If you're defeated by Abyssal Girl, you will cover your body with a slime to immobilize you and then and then spit it your way to the Abyss. There she will mercifully mount you and ride your holy sword. <laughs> you will experience a non-stop orgasm hell. <laughs> the more you struggle and beg her to stop, the more excited she will become. You will be summoned back to Earth by the Orders after one week of your defeat. <laughs> this doesn't sound so bad actually! <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, I have Xenomorph porn on my computer, so, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, um, let's, let's continue reading. Demons are the spawns of Satan and the true enemy of God. They're one of the most powerful enemies you can fight, and you should not underestimate them. They can take on a human from, to, to, f <laughs> they are, can, <laughs> alright, one second. They can take on a human form to disguise themselves, but will revent, revert to, your tr to their true form in combat or when they need to use their magical powers. <laughs> a demon's body will give you great pleasure during fights, and they will have one or two holes which are immune to your judgments. You must try and last long enough to fill multiple holes with your seed, or will risk defeat. If a demon defeats you, they will subdue they will subdue you and stimulate you in various ways to edge you towards ejaculation. But they will prevent you from reaching climax with their foul magic. When they won't stimulate you all the time, like an abyssal, the curse will keep you at the edge of your orgasm and your arousal will never go down until you have sprayed your holy water from your holy sword. The other will rescue you after two weeks and remove the demon's curse. Wait, wait. That sounds kind of illogical. So, I can only use the curse when I come, but the curse prevents me from coming. That, that doesn't make sense. Wait. Huh? Uh. Yeah, okay. Let's just continue reading, alright? We, we're already at minus eight. Fallen angels. Fallen angels are corrupted angels who have been given into their desires and abandoned the path of righteousness and justice. In combat, fallen angels are fearsome opponents, masters of close combat, and are capable and able to cast powerful battle magic. When fighting them, they will use their magic to perform loot magic, which will aid them in the fight. If she finds out you are a Sanctum Galadium, she will cast a spell on herself, which will make her immune to your judgments. 
if you are defeated by a fallen angel, she will, she will and rape you and then fall in love and then fall in love with you. She will release you and start to act as your wife. You might think this doesn't sound so bad, but fallen angels are infamous for being yonderless and she will undoubtedly kill you after kill you you have plunged your holy sword into. The only way to free yourself from a fallen angel is to fool her into thinking you love her and convince her she does not need to use her magic to be immune to your judgments and then... Yes, okay, um, I'm scared. I'm scared. Minus ten. Minus ten. I'm scared. Companions, the order offers you a fine selection of agents which you can recruit. They possess a wide variety of skills and abilities which may prove invaluable in your fight against evil. Aw, oh, this is going to be cute. Sister Bethany. While Bethany might be a klutz and helpless in combat, she is blessed with visions of the future and she can of sensing and she can of sensing evil. Bethany is very submissive, easily embarrassed and quite shy. But hopefully you won't be a problem for you. Yeah, that won't be a problem, but the problem is I already have a I already can detect enemies and she's basically just a radar that is good and bad, I assume. Uh, so, maybe. Hope and Faith. These two sisters are biological sisters and quite inseparable. Hope is the older sister and Faith is the younger. While they don't possess any remarkable fighting skills, they can cook, clean and perform many household chores for you. Nah. Sister Alicia. Sister Alicia is a nymphomaniac and constantly struggles with her sinful thoughts. Because of her sinful nature, she is excellent bait to lure the enemies of God. She is also a decent hacker. Sounds good. Sister Alicia goes on the maybe folder. Sister Katerina. Katerina is one of the Order's assassins and will be a powerful ally in battle. She has developed her own battle suit, which she claims enhances her agility and speed in combat, but it's more likely she's just an exhibitionist. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, maybe. Sister Aiko. Aiko is a warrior made nun trained in the deadly art of Ganfu. She will provide excellent fire support in battle. Aiko will insist on calling you master and will serve you loyally and without question. Yeah, I take this one. We are at minus, we are at three with the coins. Wait, we are not. We are not because we have a holy harem. Wait, wait, wait. It, it means one less, right? So this means we are at four coins. Sister Anna. Anna descends from a proud family of knights and has sworn to serve the order to honor her knightly heritage. She's a fiercely close combat fighter and few can match her skill with a sword. <gasps> Anna is proud, stubborn, hot-blooded, joyful and constantly hungry. Mm. What do you mean with constantly hungry? <laughs> Sorry, that was probably more creepy than I than I anticipated. Oh, Sister Sistine. <laughs> yeah, I only saw the gun and was immediately hooked. Sister Sistine is a capable soldier and an excellent sharpshooter. She will insist that you call her sis and will call you Bakani Onichan. <laughs> Depending on her mood, be warned, she's quite the tsundere and she's very insecure about her small chest. You know what? We have Aiko already, so, hmm. Hmm. Do we really need two shooters? So she has... So Gunfu is yeah, basically every weapon. So basically, Sister Aiko is just, you know, uh, has a different personality than Sistine. So I don't need Sistine. I, I can just give Aiko a shot, uh, a, a sniper rifle, and that's it. Sister Mercy. Mercy is a wildly of a holy is, is the wielder of the holy light and is capable of divine healing and performance enhancing blessings. She's kind, considerate, cheerful, and would make a great addition to your team. We need a healer. Sister Joanna. Joanna is a light wielder, light mercy, but unlike her, she uses the holy light to smite and bring the wick. Okay, we, we are we have one damage dealer. We have one mage, now we need a healer. So I take mercy. So we are at three coins. All right. Sister Mariah, Sister Teresa, and Sister Catherine. Catherine looks, looks kind of scary. 
Sister Teresa. Teresa was born with a remarkable talent of, for fighting. She's a true prodigy in the way of the sword, and she is capable of performing superhuman feats with her sword. However, Teresa is dim-witted, gullible, and not the sharpest tool in the shed. Sister Mariah. Mariah was taught swordmanship by the finest masters of fencing in France. She is a master duelist, and few in the order can match her skill with the rapier. Mariah is proud and competitive. She loves to turn everything into a competition. Bet or challenge? No, thank you. Sister Catherine. Catherine is an anti-mage. She uses holy relics and charms to dissolve spells, enhance en enchantments and curses to render them harmless. Catherine is intelligent, calculating, blunt, logical and rational. Some view her as cold, but once you get to know her, you will realize she has a very kind heart. Well, not really. I'm a Judas priest. I wouldn't really need her. Like... Oh my god, this one... <laughs> what the fuck? Beatrice Burford. Beatrice of noble birth. Her family was one of the three families which founded the Order. She has the power to summon divine angel-forged almonds, and she has the skill to wield them with deadly precision. Beatrice can sometimes act n ha n naughty and pompous, but she means well. Sister Rose. Rose employs unorthodox tactics, which many of the Order viewers extreme. In combat, she uses ancient holy blood rituals, which were previously banned by the church. Rose is playful, flirty, charming, and polite. She loves to play games, and her motto is to win at any cost. Well, otherwise she wouldn't use blood rituals, right? Sister Sarah. Sarah is a bookworm and possesses vast knowledge of the occult. She will be able to craft holy potions and bless your weapons to become even more effective against specific enemies of God. Sarah's calm, collected, and quite the coon kudere. I take Sarah. All right, we are at two coins. Oh boy. Lilith. Ooh. Lilith didn't join the order by free will. She is an imp from hell, which, with the order, is bound to its service. As a lesser demon, she can provide valuable information and insight on the creature of darkness. She can also cast battle magic. Lilith is mischievous, playful, and loves to talk dirty to embarrass the easily embarrassed. I just want, honestly, I just want her for for like the for for, for the, yeah yeah. I, be, I I I I can see myself getting along well with her. <laughs> Gabriella is a half angel. She will look like a normal human for most of the time, but when fighting, she will manifest wings to draw upon her angelic powers. Gabriella is wise, but also arrogant, vain, and she will expect you to treat her like a goddess. No, thank you. Alexandra is an angel fledgling. While she is not as powerful as a mature angel, her power is passive nonetheless. <laughs> Alexandra is innocent, cheerful, and curious. She is especially curious of humans, and that is partially why she joined the Order. Should I risk it? Should I risk it? I think we are at minus seven. With, uh... Hmm. Nah, it would be too big of a risk. Alexandra, you know what? I'm gonna put you on the maybe folder, alright? Alright. Alright, we have like four companions now, which is great. <laughs> and that harem skill is way too overpowered. <laughs> mm. Alright. Base of operation. As an agent of the Order, you will need a base of operation. Depending on the mission you choose, you might need to travel a lot, so all bases of operations are easily replaced and paid by, for by the Holy Order. If you need to travel, the church will pay all expenses for the travel, including as many extra tickets you might need. Choose only one option. If you choose an expensive option, you gain access to all the cheaper options and any option with the same price. Oh. Church. As a member of the Order, you will be welcome to stay at any church and use it as your base of operation. While you get to cooked food in a church, it will be the same food they feed the homeless with. Expect a lot of soup. This actually sounds kind of nice. Apartment. The Order will supply you with a medium-sized apartment, fully furnished in any city you travel to. You will need to clean the apartment, wash your clothes and cook yourself, unless you have a companion or someone else who does it for you. Yes. Yes, I take the apartment. Or let's, you know what, let's continue reading. 
There are as many fortified secret hideouts around the world, you will gain access to all of them. There are lots of large armories where you gain access to the best weapons and equipment of the Order has to offer. If you live in a secret hideout, it will be similar to an apartment, only more luxurious. And you will meet a lot of interesting people who also work for the Order. First class hotel, mansion, heaven, I can literally go to heaven, no thank you. <laughs> mm, actually the secret hideout sounds just, I take the secret hideout, we are at minus one with the coins. Ah. All right, uh, we are at, I think that's minus seven, right? We were at minus seven with the, yeah, that's a seven. All right, we are at minus seven and minus one. Oh boy. Mission, as an agent of the order, you have choose to undertake a mission. You may only choose one mission. If you want some side assignments to your mission or don't want to take any, take on any mission and want some action, the order will send you detailed information on several targets, which you can freely choose among. The mission will have a list of expected enemies. These enemies will most likely be involved in the mission, and it is wise to be able to judge as many of them as possible. However, that is not required for the success of the mission, but it will make things easier and lower the chances of temporary defeats. Many of the missions will prevent global disasters, but don't mind that if you don't pick a mission, other agents of the order will deal with it, and everything will be fine. All right, so this is the point where I need to gain my shit back. Because I have to be either zero or plus. We are at minus seven for the magic stuff and minus one for the gold. So that will be hard. The Night Queen. Accepted enemies, mortals, the possessed, witches, the undead, and vampires. Hey, that fits my... Do... <laughs> you know? That, that fits my skills? An ancient enemy of the Order, previously thought slain, has resurfaced and is now secretly building up an army to take over the world. She is the mother of all vampires and one of the most powerful necromancers in the world. And on top of that... She possesses true immortality, but that won't save her from being judged by a holy sword. We have a lead on some necromantic cult which has been raising undead for her. Yeah, you know what? I take this one. I take this one because I am plus against wishes, plus against undead, and plus against vampires. And the mortals? Dude, I have magic. They're dead as fuck. All right, I get one golden coin. We are at zero coins and we are at minus four for the magic stuff. So just one more mission, or maybe two. Demon Leia. Expected enemies, mortals, the possessed, witches and demons. Choose of the, se cho choose of the seven arc demons of sin. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't have this one, all right? So I, I guess we will be skipping this one because we are missing information here. But I'm pretty sure it's just a sexual version of the original sins. Alright. The secret war. Expected enemy is all. Nah, nah, we, we, we skipped this one. Cult of Cthulhu. Mortals, witches and abyssiles. Yeah, this sounds good. A unknown entity known only as Cthulhu has built an insidious cult which worships her as a god. She has taught them eldritch incantations and rituals, and they seem to abduct people and perform perverted rituals on them. But what is most worrying is that they have stolen several ancient artifacts. The reason for this is unknown, but she must be stopped, and even the Illuminati seems to want to stop her. <laughs> you must bring your judgment upon her and her own holy cult. Cooperation with Illuminati agents is not advised, but the Order will allow cooperation if you find it necessary. That sounds actually kind of interesting. Like, I if 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 this would be a, like an actual game that we could play, I would take Code of Cthulhu because this sounds just like an interesting story to follow. Wolves among sheep. Sinners have infiltrated the Order and are corrupting it. I no, I hate those stories. No, skip it, skip it. The Void Maidens. The enemies possessed uh, witches and abyssals. It's the same with Cthulhu, actually, right? 
No, mortal switches at a besides, and here's the, okay. It's like once it's like a little tiny bit heavier on the battle. The void maidens are a splinter faction of the star guidance. They are fallen magical girls who have been corrupted by the power of the void. While magical girls are sinful witches, these corrupted magical girls are a direct threat to the order and humanity itself. You must hunt down and bring your judgment upon the void maidens and destroy their faction. <clears throat> While any magical girl counts as a witch, and technically are tier one enemies, they can possess the same powers as a tier three enemy. You know what? Fuck magical girls. Not like have sex with them, but fuck them. Don't like them. I take this mission just to get rid of them. We actually get. We actually have two coins more, which is nice, and we are at minus two. One more mission. Come on, something something easy, please. Six sinners, expected enemies, mortals, witches to possess servants of Slan. Mm -mm. Nope. Lightbringer. Expected enemies unknown, gain three. This mission requires the divine blessing missionary. You have been tasked to enforce God's justice in another universe and bring the force of evil to justice. Do I have no further information about this mission due to flexibility and unpredictability? Hmm. Let me go back to one. So, we have, it costs two, we are at minus two, it gives us three. Mm. That, drawbacks. Alright, I do it. I add the alternate universe thingy, because this Sounds interesting as fuck. So, how does the calculation work? We take minus two for, we are at minus four, but at three because we are now at minus one. And we still have two coins. Drawbacks. If you crave more power and gold, there are a number of different ways to further increase your holy powers and earn your gold. Last chance. A sinner you have judged with your holy sword will have one last chance to repent only if they continue to live a sin and do evil, your judgment will be applied to them. Alright? Double-edged sword! <laughs> Any judgment you bring with your holy sword will also affect you. The backlash effect will only last for one week. No. Who would, who would do that? Holy prayer. Before you plunge your holy sword into someone, you must say a short prayer. Otherwise, you won't be able to judge them. The safety word is starfish. Mm. <laughs> Marriage. The drawback requires you to have at least one companion. Choose one companion, you will marry that companion. Though a power of sanctity and marriage, you will gain more holy power. However, you are not allowed to have sex with anyone except her. Bringing judgment on enemies of God is an exception of the rule. Lolicon. <laughs> like so many other holy men, you have chosen the path of a lolicon. This is a holy and honorable fetish, which will bring you holy powers. Seagull Loli will make you hard as diamonds and make you yearn for sex. If you don't have sex regularly, you won't be able to contain your love for Loli, so you will go on a lowly raping spree. <laughs> this is a joke. Limited power. The power, power within your seat is limited, and you must refrain of spilling it for one week in order to let the power build up to... No. Sister Joy. Sister Joy is naive and kind-hearted. She comes from a wealthy family and has always wanted to become a champion of justice. However, she is a huge klutz, has the worst of luck. Most of the agents of the Order outright refuse to work with her since she is always messing up everything and disadvantages the team, even if she is a healer. If you let her join you and let her fight alongside you in battle, she will be overjoyed and her father will secretly pay you a handsome amount of money. Joy always tries her best and wants to be useful to you, but she will pretty much fail at everything so she does and make any fight much harder than it should be. Hmm. Think about it. Think about it. We don't have to take her on battles. She can be officially in our squad and then ta stay in the base. So she's a huge klutz and fails at a lot of things. Hmm.
You know what? I take it. I mean, I have no more use for coin, but I take it. Just, just for the, f just for the lols. We, we, we need comic relief, all right? Blien Borford. Blien is Beatrice Blorford's older sister, and she's also ranked as the seventh strongest member in the order. Blien also decided that you are her rival and will go through great lengths to humiliate you and annoy you. If you accepted any mission, she will also take on the same mission, accept her to sweep in and defeat your enemies when you have done all the hard work and steal all the credit for it, all by laughing like Ojo Sama that she is. Don't expect to get rid of her, you won't be able to. Nah, 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 nah. Unfavored enemy. Choose one enemy of God which you have purchased the ability to affect with your judgments. You are terrible at fighting against your chosen enemy. Whenever you fight against them, you will most likely suffer a humiliating defeat. You have a slightly higher chance of encountering your favorite enemy. Do it. Alright. No, thank you. Delayed rescue. You can gain some extra money by lowering your rescue priority. When you are defeated by an enemy of God, your rescue will take twice as long time. Your selfless action to prioritize others before you will also... Hmm. Let's keep on reading, shall we? Milking. Sister Victoria or Blood Moon? And the Blood Moon gives me nothing? The forces of EU left succeeded in corrupting the moon and turning it red blah 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 blah. Oh, it's basically just one free companion, but, but basically being a hard mode. Hmm. I take unfavored enemy, to be honest. All right. Now here's the question: Who shall be our unfavored enemy? Uh, we were here at the end. The enemy list was on the other page. All right. Who shall be our unfavored enemy? Hmm. All right. Mortals with public humiliation. No, thank you. Which which would sound the worst when I def when I be defeated? Uh I I no 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 thank you no thank you Slanish. We are strong against the undead. No thank you fallen angels. Um I I hmm I I would say again the these possessed sh sound like such pushovers. But but here's the problem. What is our missions again? Oh fuck. Yeah, I'm taking this way too serious, I know. Now the problem is, we are on the mission of the Night Queen and the Void Maidens and I think even also the Kuda and, oh, and, and this. Now the Lightbringer quest, of course, uh, since it is an alternate universe of my choosing, there could technically be no enemies at all, but you know, this will actually be the easiest one. Um, I just, you know what? Fuck it. You know what? Fuck it. Let, let's take the possessed. Let's let's say I'm weak against the possessed. Fuck it. Even though it doesn't make any sense at all with my holy powers. My holy powers would just sweep the first tire completely. <laughs> Can't believe I'm taking this so serious. But, but we have four coin. We have four coin. Which means we can have four more companions and they can kick us out when we are about to fail against one of the possessed <laughs> these possessed are such pushovers jesus christ all right so we can take three more companions isn't that awesome <laughs> this is the best harem ever uh all right three more i can take three actually i can take four with me four all right all right so i take hope and faith to stay at home with uh with with our huge cluts Maybe they can help each other out. And maybe I even let them sleep with each other and that can end in some pretty nice movies. Alright. Three. Come on. Come on. Uh Anna is proud, stubborn, hot blooded, joyful and constantly angry. Hmm, Sister Katerina. Katerina's one of the oldest assassins. Yes, we take Katerina with us. An assassin. Good. Sister Joanna. 
Na na na, Sister Mariah, Sister Teresa. Sister Teresa was. Teresa is dimwitted, gullible, and not the sharpest tool in the shed. Prodigy of the way of the sword, capable of fulfilling superhuman feats with a sword. We take Teresa with us. We are at one. And finally, let's take with us. Let's take with us Alexandra. Because I said we put her on hold. Alright. We did it. We had zero on both. <laughs> but, but, we have perfect anime fodder. I want to watch this anime. Like, seriously. Wouldn't that be badass? Ima imagine the anime that would come out of that. Or, oh, the hentai that would come out of that. Mm. And, and with the missions that I've chosen, that could actually be a minimum of three seasons. Think about it. Think about it. How awesome the anime would be. Like season one, the Night Queen. Season two, the Void Mains. And season three, the Lightbringer. Yeah, I would watch that. I would watch that hentai. Or anime. Edgy anime. My name is Suitopi. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and tomorrow, I will probably do two fanfictions once again. But this time, I will make... 100% sure that I read the tags. Ugh. Goodbye.